Hello guys, in this new tutorial of Xamarin Farms today, I'm gonna show you how to open your application from a link um, received in email or somewhere in the internet. Before that, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell for more videos. So, let's begin by creating a new project and inside it we're gonna create a new page type of um, Prism content page. Let's call it product details. And let's move to uh, the view model and uh, change the parent class to view uh, model base. And let's generate the new constructor with um, the navigation service and delete the old one. After that, we're gonna override um, the uninitialized method here. And we're gonna use the navigation parameters in order to get um, or retrieve uh, the product ID um, variable. So let's make parameters dot get value type of link um, the product ID, and before that we're gonna check if this um, product ID uh, key exists. After that, we're going to define a new property, bindable property called uh, product ID. And let's define the get and set like in other videos to make this um, uh, property bindable. Great. Now let's assign this product ID to the retrieved uh, value from the navigation parameters. Now let's make some stub here. So we're gonna check if the product ID equal to one, we're gonna assign um, the image URL of our product. So in the real case, you need to retrieve somewhere from uh, your API um, the data of your product details. Let's define another property called uh, product image URL in our case here. And we need to um, define this product image uh, with the stub here. So um, before that, we're going to go to the XAML page here. And we're going to create an image inside the grid and bind the source uh, property to our um, product image URL. Great, and after that, we're gonna define some steps for our product uh, image URL. Great, we have done here, I think. Let's move to um, the main activity in the Android project. And here we need to define something called intent filter um, in order to make your application browsable or you can open your application from a URL received an email, for example, or um, you have a, new, a, a URL uh, from internet uh, on uh, uh, your site web, for example. So here, the intent filter, we're going to define some uh, data schema, which means your protocol, for example, the HTTP or HTTPS, the data host. Uh, in real case, it will be your um, domain, uh, web domain. So it can be local host or your domain.com, for example. The data prefix, we're going to use a slash. And after that, we're going to say to, to verify to true uh, every time the application will uh, verify this um, three parameters. And finally, we're going to define something called categories, which means your application can be an intent dot action view or intent dot um, category default category. Or um, it can be um, browsable category browsable which means you can uh, open your application from a browser great let's duplicate this intent filter to and change the data schema to https which means you can open your application from http and https from your uh, domain after that, let's move to uh, the app.cs file. And here we're going to override um, a method called on 
IPP link request received. And here we're gonna make some checks here for security reasons. So we're gonna check if uh, the host is uh, equal to your domain and the segments um, different from the rule and the length will be equal to three or more um, switch your um, needs. So we're gonna retrieve the action. So the action like in the ISP web API, the action will present um, an action name, for example, uh, product details, get uh, in product details, uh, etc. And um, we need to replace the slash with uh, empty string. After that, we're gonna um, verify if your uh, parameters is valid. So in our case, we need uh, one uh, ID and the root. So which means if we have uh, more than one ID, so it's not valid, we're gonna, uh, we cannot open the application or we can open the application and uh, redirect the user to the landing page. Now, let's check if the action dot to lower equal to your um, uh, expected action. In our case, for example, product details and if um, the action params valid. So if the product is greater than zero, which something, which means uh, it's something real, we have a real product ID. So we can navigate to the page detail, else it can be security attack. So it can be a user try to hack your application to get more data from the application. So in this case, we'll redirect him to the home page or the login page and if you, you have one. So if the product ID greater than zero, we need to navigate to a product details page and we, we need to pass um, the product ID, the target product ID and navigation params here. So um, let's define the product ID and the value of product ID. Cool. And uh, another way, we'll navigate to the home page, the main page. Let's try and see. So yeah, I created a draft of email. So here we have our application. Um, and if I um, click on twice, we get nothing. So we have a problem here. Ah, let's define, let's rename the product details to product details page and don't forget to rename it in the CS and the XAML page. And the register types, we need to rename it to uh, product details page. Yes, let's run and see. So, Let's move to the mail and let's tap on, uh, here we go. So we check all our business and here you have your uh, product details. Awesome, cool. So um, you can close um, your application and try to open it uh, from a link when the application is closed. So let's try and see good so here we have our uh, product details so you can open from different schema http and https as you want so that's all for this tutorial thank you very much and see you in the next video